Hi guys, welcome to another section of our end-to-end -end test automation with Cypress course. And in this section, we are going to talk about mocking and stubbing network calls with Cypress. So we have been talking about Cypress a lot in all these sections, but we have not really talked about the mocking and stubbing a lot in our course. And because there are so many questions asked by students asking how to work with the network stubbing and mocking in Cypress, this section is now covered with all those questions for you. So what is mocking and stubbing? Well, a method stub or simply stub in software development is a piece of code used to stand in for some other programming functionality. A stub may stimulate the behavior of existing code, such as procedure on a remote machine or a method, or often called as mocks, or be a temporary substitute for yet to be developed code. So this is what is mocking and this is how things are going to happen. I mean, you might have seen a situation while working with an organization where the UI might be developed, but the API might not be developed or the vice versa can also happen. Like API will be there, but UI may not be there. And there are situations where in a very well developed product, the UI will be developed with the wireframes and the UI work starts pretty quickly, but because the developers in the API team with some backends not being developed, they may be delayed and you might need to somehow mock the API response so that the UI can behave perfectly. So these are the things that you can actually do. So this is the behavior, which is not actually mocking, but this is called as stubbing because you are expecting some sort of data coming out from an API or an XHR for your UI so that the UI can render it clearly. And that's what we are gonna be doing in Cypress using what is called as stubbing. So in Cypress, it is very easy to stub a network response by intercepting the API or XHR call and inject stubbed data or C data in it. This will be helpful to test applications even if the XHR or the API is not ready for you to consume within that particular UI. And this can be done in many different ways in Cypress. And there was a very prevalent way of doing it using what is called as the sci.route and sci.server earlier before Cypress 6. But now after Cypress 6, there is something called as sci.intercept, which is very, very handy. And it is a next generation successor to sci.route because it's gonna offer you more flexibility and granular control over handling of the network layers. So you will now have the out of the box support for intercepting fetch calls, page loads, and resource loads in addition to the pre-existing support for XML HTTP request, which is really, really cool. I mean, these were not a thing in side.route route and side art server commands before, but now it is already there with fetch call itself which was something not supported before in Cypress, and now Cypress does support it with Intercept, which is pretty cool. And there is a very, very minor difference in terms of the syntax if you already are using Cy.route and Cy.route server, and if you're trying to migrate to the Intercept, then the syntax is gonna look something like this. I mean, at the moment, if you use Cy.route server and Cy.route route, you'd probably see a obsolete error on the IDE because those are not something recommended by the Cypress team. Rather, you should be using what is called as sci.intercept, something like this. And as you can see here, the syntax looks pretty exactly the same, which is mentioned on the sci.route, just that you can also specify an additional optional get as a first parameter for the intercept. You can also specify post if you want to. So you already have some control over that. So that is really, really cool while you do the sci.intercept. And other than that, the fixture is now like a parameter. You can specify that and even intercept, you have many different ways to uh, work with it. So the changes in terms of the whole intercept itself is gonna be like this. You have more control over the request and the response assertions, and you can also filter the network request even with a header level matching, which is really good. I mean, these things are really possible because of the powerful route matcher and route handler option available within the intercept. And this is exactly what we'll be discussing in this particular section where we will be actually doing the same operation using the interceptions in Cypress. So 
this intercept option is going to be something like this as you can see here for an example you can do a user interception something like this or you can also specify the full blown url of the network or the xhr that you will be intercepting and then you can inject the data from the example.json to the particular xhr that you are actually performing a get operation to or you can also do something like uh, like showing what response that you wanted to see using a different way using the response dot replay method something like this i mean this is another way you can also per set the throttling uh, response speed to 64 kilobits per second or you can reduce it and you can see like how actually your ui behaves during that particular operation or you can also get the response object and then you can verify once the page is being loaded and you can see whether the response body is really showing what you are looking for so those things you can do it as well so these are some of the good examples that i can really find it out while working with it and you can also do something like a post operation where you can perform not just for the response but also for the request and you can see how your ui has been behaving during those stubbing operation so these are some things which you can do in cypress and it is very very easy using the dot intercept command which is recently introduced in cypress 6. so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so stay tuned for our next lecture